you're there now. You can introduce and start. I can start? Good morning. My name is Jacqueline Wainwright, and I am the CEO of Air Healthcare. And I'm honored to have the opportunity to share with you today how I can, um, how we've been leveraging um, data and AI to improve behavioral health care for citizens and individuals around the globe. First of all, I want to thank you um, to the Dubai Health Authority and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed for inviting me to participate in this wonderful event. And I apologize, I couldn't be there in person, but weather prevented me from making it to Dubai in time for the presentation. So, like I said, I will be sharing with you today um, how our organization has been leveraging data and artificial intelligence to improve uh, the treatment and outcomes of behavioral health for um, over a quarter of a million individuals here in the United States. So just to set the stage, uh, behavioral health is one of the greatest unaddressed problems in healthcare today. Uh, it's not only the leading cause of disability worldwide, but about 193 billion US dollars in lost earnings every year due to behavioral health related conditions. So when I say behavioral health, uh, I'm talking about mental illness, I'm talking about uh, cognitive disorders, we're talking about uh, anxiety, depression, substance use disorder, and really more than 25% of the population globally, or one in four individuals, suffers from some type of behavioral health disorder in a given year. So that's a large number of people. Um, of that group of people that is uh, impacted by a behavioral health condition, 70% um, of those individuals never receive treatment. So right off the bat, we're talking about a large number of people walking around sick. Um, and, you know, as we've increased spending, at least here in the United States, uh, we still continue to miss 70% of those individuals uh, yet it has become the single most expensive medical condition here in the United States. And I would expect the, the globe to follow suit. Um, another interesting uh, fact that is important to understand when we're talking about behavioral health, it costs uh, two to three times more to treat the physical health of a patient uh, with an underlying behavioral health condition than it does the same patient um, with the same physical conditions that does not have a mental or behavioral health disorder. So it complicates um, medical conditions, it complicates chronic disease conditions, and it makes it a very complex problem for health professionals to solve. So now that we've sort of understood the problem and the context um, a little bit better, I wanna talk about how we are actually addressing or what treatment looks like today, um, traditional treatment. Um, so there's a lot of problems with the way that we address behavioral health currently. Uh, it's uh, fragmented. Uh, there's not any integration. So providers are treating individuals in silos without collaboration or communication. Uh, it's a chronic disease, yet we're treating it in acute episodic um, model of care. So obviously that's not very effective. Uh, there's also a lack of standardization when it comes to treating the disease. Uh, there's uh, lots of evidence and evidence-based approaches to treatment, but not everybody is, is utilizing those treatments. And therefore, treatment, is, if it's received at all, is rarely matched to the severity or the stage of the disease. And then finally, when we're talking about outcomes, which is really the foundation of this um, forum, and the world uh, is really focused nowadays on outcome and, and health outcomes driving um, you know, the healthcare field. Uh, there are no outcomes uh, really for behavioral health, uh, not, not past 30 days, which for a chronic disease is really unacceptable. So now that we understand what the current model of treatment looks like and how the disease is impacting people around the globe, like to talk to you about the opportunities for leveraging data and the power of predictive analytics and artificial intelligence to overcome some of these obstacles and improve uh, the outcomes for behavioral health for patients globally. So uh, there's 
obviously a lot of healthcare data, and we have um, built a machine learning model that leverages claims data, it leverages EMR data, uh, lab data, pharmacy data, and what we're able to do is bring all of that data in and uh, run it through our predictive analytics, and, and that identifies individuals uh, within a population that are suffering from an underlying behavioral health condition or an unmet need. And we call that uh, group of group of people the missing middle. So within a population, those people may have never been diagnosed with a behavioral health disorder or may not even know that they're suffering from a behavioral health condition. Uh, and so they obviously would never get treatment. But in this model, because of the, the, the quantum computing and some of the other discoveries that make this type of technology available today, it allows us to have a more data-driven, proactive approach to the treatment of behavioral health conditions. So we're really um, reducing that number, that 70% of people that typically don't get treatments, and we're, we're um, cutting that down and really getting to people before they get sick. So essentially really a proactive approach to healthcare in a really complex um, area of healthcare to begin with. So let's talk a little bit about how that looks like and how it um, actually is, is utilized in our environment. So I'm gonna move through this quickly, but basically you're talking about data acquisition. So aggregating a lot of data on a lot of different patients and then being able to risk stratify. So in order to de deliver population health effectively, we need to be able to stratify the population and assign risk levels so we know who to reach out to or which patients need the most attention at which time. And then we're gonna um, identify the different cohorts and put them into groups so that we can um, match the diagnosis and severity to determine the clinical pathway. And then in our organization, once that's determined, uh, we put those individuals into a care management program where their telephone-based care management is delivered by licensed clinicians over a period of time. And it's matched to uh, the method and the frequency is matched to the diagnosis and the severity of the, um, of the condition. And then the model is set up so that we are reporting on the effectiveness and measuring the effectiveness of the clinical intervention. We're also training the model over time to um, get better at um, understanding which patient needs which intervention at which time and then measuring the effectiveness of that intervention. So it's a true machine learning model. Um, so the, the most important thing to remember is that uh, behavioral health conditions are um, patients are care avoidant. Typically, they do not seek out um, treatment. And so this approach to behavioral health really is innovative and reduces significantly the burden of disease on the population. So that, that again, we're leveraging claims data and machine learning to find people before they get sick. Um, we've got about 30 proprietary algorithms and machine learning models that we're using to find these individuals and proactively reach out to them uh, before they get sicker. And so ultimately, once we've identified those individuals, um, we're using a chronic disease model of care management where a licensed clinician is interacting with patients um, and helping them to maintain their care plan over a long period of time so that they can achieve essentially remission. Uh, which is the key to um, overcoming chronic disease or at least managing chronic disease over a long period of time. So again, just to recap, uh, it's a chronic progressive disease. Um, we need to treat it that way. So we need to address it over a long period of time, help people get well. We also need to find people before they get sick and take a proactive approach to treating behavioral health illnesses. So just real quickly to share with you some of the validated outcomes that this model has produced. We've seen a 60% reduction in annual claims uh, costs for um, enrolled participants. Uh, we see fewer, 71% fewer emergency department visits for participating individuals. And for substance use disorder, most importantly, we see a 69% remission rate at one year. Um, compared to the at least the average here in the United States, which is 30%. So that's twice the national average. We also see a net annual savings of about $4,000 um, per year, that's US dollars, um, as opposed to the control group in this scientific um, study, 
where the control group increased the total cost by about 1,200 US dollars. Uh, and again, that's about a four to one um, return on investment as opposed to a one to one in traditional solutions. And we have a significant um, increase in member engagement. So again, um, you know, I'm here really to share with you today that data-driven approach to behavioral health that is leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence to improve outcomes and improve the quality of life of the individuals that are suffering from these types of illnesses is the key to success. Um, and as I see it, the future of healthcare. So the mantra is if we can predict and prevent as opposed to chase and treat, uh, we will be wildly successful in improving the health of um, those individuals around the globe and building healthier communities. So again, I appreciate the opportunity to present with you today, and uh, I look forward to participating in the forum and also the improving of the health um, and wellness of individuals around the globe. So thank you for having me, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here today and to share with you our discoveries in behavioral health and data analytics. Thank you.